<laughs> okay, questions. Today I'm going to um, do my best to reply to a few questions that have come in from Thraden, Amy, and Joshua. So, diving right in. Thraden asks, Can you give me some tips on how to stay lucid beyond the alpha waves? I have a lot of thoughts that I keep pushing away, but when I do that, I can't seem to fall asleep. I think most people have trouble at this point. Okay. Um, the brain waves. Let's just set a foundation to begin with. Uh, there's the beta brain waves, the alpha brain waves, theta, delta, and gamma brain waves. Um, right now, what we are predominantly familiar with is the beta brain wave, or conscious, or Thraden consciousness reality. Um, <clears throat> to date, what we've been doing is uh, uh, experiencing a sort of division between these brain waves. We experience them one at a time, individually. And this is why in our day-to-day -day reality in the beta brain wave, the beta brain wave is predominant. There doesn't seem to be an inclusiveness of the alpha, theta, delta, and gamma part of ourselves. <laughs> and uh, this is why when we go to sleep at night, we tend to wake up in the morning having no recall of anything that just happened through the night. Okay, there's, there's one key element that I feel allows me to uh, uh, continue staying lucid, and this is uh, developing the ability to maintain the waves simultaneously. So I would suggest um, to not get over ambitious, the alpha brain wave is the subconscious to me, dimensions four, five, and six, and this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot to um, uh, maintain lucidity through, uh, because the only way you can hold lucidity through it is by maintaining the beta and alpha brain wave simultaneously. Otherwise, you sort of go away <laughs> throughout uh, this portion of your evening. Okay, you are in, well, the you that you're used to, Thraden, uh, for example, or Casey, for another example, um, are within that beta brain wave, that conscious slash reality. Okay, so we need the beta brain wave to be maintained simultaneously within the alpha brain wave. And then um, I am what I call lucid in the alpha brain wave. Okay, and um, this, is, this is challenging, my friend. Um, again, this has been happening with me for years, and even now it's, I mean... <clears throat> Well, I, I'm certainly not steady or perfected in this. Um, when I first began, you know, I would only be able to maintain lucidity for, for seconds. <laughs> and, you know, then this begins to expand. Um, and also, only every now and again, you know, it, it would take me a while before I had the energy again to maintain the beta within the alpha. So that, again, I am what I call lucid while in the alpha brainwave, or subconscious territory. Um, the subconscious I equate with the higher self, what some people refer to as the higher self, or what I refer to as the environment at large, everything I see in my visual field. So the conscious mind identifies itself solely with this portion of what it sees in the field, and uh, the subconscious or alpha wave identifies itself with every 
thing that is in the field, with the field itself at large. So again, this is a lot to maintain lucidity through. It incorporates a lot of territory, and I would focus on this first, because only when you're able to maintain the beta brainwave simultaneously with the alpha brainwave will the event open up to include the theta brainwave. Okay, I hope that made sense. Now, the... Um, the practice most associated with bringing about the alpha brainwave uh, during the day while you are conscious or, or in beta uh, is meditation. And so, you know, sit to meditate or practice breathing uh, patterns that help bring about the alpha while you are awake, that bring about that meditative um, situation while you are awake. These are, this is what I would recommend doing. So on the day side of reality, practice some meditation. On the night side of reality, uh, take that meditation into your evening and see how long you can uh, remain present, uh, uh, remain, um, keep the beta brain wave happening while inside the alpha. Okay, there's some more coming through, but right now I'm going to leave it at this, and if you have more question or more detail you would like to go into, write again. Okay? All right. Amy says, Could you maybe do a video about the possible coming changes to Earth? I don't have any fear, only excitement, but I don't really know how to prepare. I hope to ascend, but I seem to be pretty far behind all others. I don't lucid dream, don't have OBEs, don't have anything magical or extraordinary happening to me. I guess the only thing I fear is that nothing will happen. The world will go on as usual. I will keep going to my stupid job, etc. I just wish one day everything would stop. That everything just be still for a long time. No shopping, no working, no driving, nothing but quiet for a long time. <laughs> what is your overall vision for the coming years? Is there really going to be a splitting and earth will ascend? <clears throat> All right, that's a big chunk, Amy. Uh, I think the most helpful thing that I could say to you um, would be to suggest that the world's not going to stop. It's you who are going to stop. You're going to stop objectifying the world. You're going to stop um, putting it outside yourself as an object. And the way that you begin to cease doing this is to begin bringing your attention in toward yourself to start bringing your attention inside yourself. Okay, when you get really good at doing this, you will begin to experience a very magical thing happen. Um, that simple movement is a movement from object reality to subject reality. And this is a large topic. This is the beginning movement of the ascension. And so, um, you know, you, you don't need to be having lucid dreams and OBEs and all of this other kind of stuff. You're waking up 
may be happening in an entirely different way. You only need one environment, one visual environment, and you have that right here. So work with the, with the visual environment that you do have. And um, meditate, breathe. Deeply look at things. There's a practice that, that helped my pineal open, my vision begin to expand, and this was a practice called Tratak, which is conscious gazing. So you simply place an object a foot or two in front of you, it can be anything, um, and you take your gaze straight into it, and you hold it there, and you don't let it move. And in a very traditional sense, you don't blink, but we won't even go there. Perhaps beginning the practice of Tritak, focusing your gaze steadily, will help your pineal open and your vision begin to expand. Once you begin to experience an event that's new, <laughs> occurring with you, simultaneously you'll begin to see that that affects not just you but everything in your visual field and that includes the world. So when you begin to ascend, you see the um, visual evidence of that all around you and then you can bring the world into the equation. But first, first you've got to dive into yourself. Otherwise everything is just hearsay. Okay? Alright, if there's more to your question or more detail, please write in again. Okay, Joshua has a lot of questions. <laughs> I have a, a couple here. Uh, the first is, do you have uh, a family slash loved ones who know of what is about to transpire in your 3D reality or new reality, and what are their responses? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't hide this from anybody. Uh, um, I will say that, uh, very interestingly, my mother's side of the family uh, is extremely open to, to this uh, sort of an event and you know it's my own great aunt and grandmother who helped bring it to me uh, and it began happening for my grandmother just prior to it beginning to happen for me. I speak mostly with my mother um, who I have been with many times before mm -hmm. perhaps to do this similar type of thing uh, and she's very open. Uh, my sister Sandy is, is open to hearing it, uh, but not necessarily bringing it about for herself yet. Um, and my brothers, uh, my brothers I work with from another location, fr from, the, from the astral. And uh, was it easy for everyone always? No. Um, but are they used to me and me being me? <laughs> yes, because, um, uh, well, I'll just say they've had a lot of time to get used to me and leave it, leave it at, at this. So it's, it's not as hard as if um, I would have been different with them throughout the years, but I, but I wasn't. Um, okay, you show very little fear when discussing your journeys. Are you always so strong when being in there? Uh, was there a time you ever felt lost? Uh, no, no, I never felt, I never felt lost. Um, my central nervous system went into shock at first, and I had uh, no idea what was going on, and uh, my heart beat through my chest for a very long period of time, and my, my whole body shook. Uh, 